Welcome to Texas Haunted Channel. Hope everyone's having a blessed day. If you're new here, definitely click that subscribe button. In today's video, my wife's MDX is getting a performance upgrade to give it just a little more power. We'll go over a few of those things here in a minute. First thing I want to mention is it's still sanded and primed in spots because I cannot get it in a paint booth. I have been working hard to find a paint booth to get it into. Um, a lot of the paint booths I've contacted, they ended up getting a lot of customers right when I asked them. So uh, they've been packed ever since. And that was a month ago so we've been rolling around with it looking quite ugly the grills missing pieces are all over the place but uh it's fine we're gonna get it in soon if god is willing this thing will be painted here this week um, the body shop contacted said they should have a spot open for me to get it in if i can i would just paint it in here but as most of you know the city's been throwing uh, citations at me for painting in my garage i don't live in an hoa or anything they're just being nazis about it so with that being said, uh, yes, it's ugly, I know. So what we're gonna be doing is swapping the intake manifold over for a nine to 10 wheel horsepower gain. So this is a J32A3 manifold. Um, they come factory on the J35A5, but if you take a J32A3 out of a TL and compare it, I, these are identical. Every measurement, I did it with my TL, I compared this manifold side by side, they're the same. Now on my J32A3 Acura TL, I took the manifold off and put this one on this is actually the one from my tl uh, this was from a minivan i got it at the junkyard for like 40 50 bucks and this comes out of the 0607 i believe um, honda odyssey minivan and you can take these and they bolt directly on no modifications required at all so you just take this manifold off and bolt that one in its place and you're good to go and just doing that I gained nine wheel horsepower, no tune done different, no intake pipe different. Literally everything was the same, just the manifold was swapped. So here it is, 237, 215 torque. Uh, we have some heat soak, so it dropped one horsepower, but that's really pretty consistent. Factory manifold from a minivan, because this actually came off the 2010 Honda Odyssey. Okay, so after the intake manifold, which he went ahead and renamed it for me so it'd be easier, um, made 245 after heat soak and 216 torque. So I'm going to be doing that on here. I have the Acura TL video. I'll link it in the description as well as the More Motorsports channel where I'm going to be painting this. You guys aren't going to want to miss this. This thing's going to look super sweet whenever it's done. It will definitely be one of a kind. So if you want to check that out, uh, go subscribe to that channel. We're almost to 100,000 subscribers on that channel. So God is good. Um, so yeah, we're going to basically just take this one off. While it's off, I'll be pulling the valve covers out and putting brand new valve cover gaskets on. It's just the best time to do it since everything will be exposed. But uh, before we do that, we're gonna go take this thing out for a drive. I'm gonna go just get on it, see how it does. I know with the all-wheel drive, it does not launch like a rocket or anything. Uh, if I remove the all-wheel drive fuse, it will smoke these tires off four days. It is crazy. I have a video called the Tire Frying Turd. I'll try to link that in the description as well. So that way, uh, you can see this thing just literally roast the tires off without the all-wheel drive hooked up. Um, but I'm keeping the all-wheel drive hooked up. We're just going to go take it out for a uh, spin, see what it does, swap this manifold over, and then take it out again. Maybe do a side-by-side -side or something comparison. But uh, yeah, should be pretty cool. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Here we go. drive shaft or take out the all-wheel drive fuse then this thing will just smoke the tires off like crazy I know because I did a video on it but uh yeah we'll go back to the house let this thing cool down swap the other intake manifold on and give it another go so I hope you guys enjoy this video okay I had to let it cool off because it was really hot so it's been sitting here cooling down while I made dinner and ate 
So uh, it's cooled down pretty good now. So I'm gonna go ahead and set you on the tripod. I'm not gonna time elapse the actual intake manifold swap, but when it comes to like doing the valve cover gaskets, I'll tell you exactly what I'm gonna do, and I'll speed that up with some music behind it so it's a little more enjoyable to watch, but here we go. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is undo all the nuts and bolts on the very top right here. Uh, then we'll have access under here. There'll be a 12 millimeter. We'll go ahead and undo all of those 12 millimeter bolts, undo any connectors that are connected, intake pipe, and pull this off. Okay, now we're going to undo all these other connectors in this vacuum line here. We'll be using the same throttle on the other intake manifold. I'll take that off when we get over to the workbench. All right, there's seven 12 millimeter bolts and then two 12 millimeter nuts. We'll go ahead and take them off. All right, I removed all the nuts and bolts. Now we're just gonna lift this straight up and out. I am gonna go ahead and take the valve covers off. There's one, two, three, four, five, 10 millimeter bolts. You'll have to undo the coil packs, take them out, and then they will pull straight out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'll time elapse that, and then we'll go over to the intake manifolds. All right, now that I got the valve cover gasket set done, uh, we've got the stock manifold here. It has four 12 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna take those off. This piece of metal will come off. There's nowhere to bolt it on this one, but we're just gonna hook it up on there, um, just wherever. Maybe I can fit that bolt over here or something. Either way, um, this piece will transfer over, and this top piece is actually separate. As you can see right here, this one is built in to the actual manifold. This one, has the um, butterfly motor up on top. So we have to use this one on this one. But uh, it's pretty straightforward. We've got a 19 millimeter right here. That is for the air intake temp. We'll just transfer this one over. Now it's not on the side like this. It's actually on the front section like this now. But uh, everything just transfers over real easy. And that's pretty much it. So. I'm going to go ahead and unbolt this and this piece, transfer it over, and then this one will bolt in. These studs have to come out, so I put one 12 millimeter on that way and put another one on the normal way. This will help us extract that very easily. Go ahead and do that to this one. So, what we're going to do is tighten 
while holding the back one. Now all we gotta do is loosen this back one up and it just extracts the stud for us. It's pretty simple, that way you don't have to use vice grips on it. It's a little bit easier of a method. We're transferring these over to the new manifold since it doesn't have any. All right, now that we got the new manifold, we'll basically just put these studs right in there. Then we will hold the back one, loosen it. That's pretty much how easy it is to do that. Okay, now that we've got the studs put in, I went and bought a gasket set for a 06 Honda Odyssey. It's an intake gasket set. came with the gaskets that I said I wasn't going to replace because they're already new. Um, so now I'm going to replace them with new ones again because the only way I could get the gasket for this top section here was to buy a whole set. So it came with a brand new throttle gasket. So I'm just gonna use the brand new one and not the ghetto one that I made. Um, but in a pinch, you can definitely make them and they work. We're gonna go ahead and put this on. And then we have the top section that'll go on after we bolt it all down. So I'm gonna go ahead, and tighten all of these nuts and bolts, and then we'll get this thing put back in and take it for a drive. Okay, so on this one, I do not use these two lower heater hoses. I actually loop them together on the um, engine itself. So that way there's no hot coolant going through here, which keeps the intake temps a little bit lower, which results in a little bit more power. If you live in a very cold climate that's cold a lot of the time, um, I definitely recommend keeping these. But since I live in Texas, it hardly ever gets freezing temps here. So it's not a big deal at all because my throttle will not freeze. But just keep that in mind. Um, things ready to go, be put on. So we're gonna head over to the car. Okay, we're gonna start with the intake gasket. Now this is a plenum spacer right here. This is factory on Pilots and uh, MDX. Gives it a little bit more torque. Now as for the plenum spacer, right here um, you can probably use it on like a j32 you just have to get these studs and stuff like that and it will give you more torque um, but it might hit the hood because of how high it is so p2r makes a really good uh, spacer that's not as thick but still gives you power so if you want to check them out um, i have other videos of me putting p2r stuff on works really well highly recommend their uh, plenum spacer and gasket set not necessarily for the mdx because this plenum is ideal for torque and power um, but yeah that's pretty simple to replace those gaskets now we're going to go ahead and lay the intake manifold on top get all the nuts and bolts tightened down and we'll be good to go This is the gasket I was talking about. I had to buy this whole intake gasket kit just for this little rubber seal. Make sure to go through and actually torque these down to spec. I was just snugging them up. We'll torque them down to spec here in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back together and I'll torque them down. And then uh, we can get this thing started up and take it for a spin.
All right, so everything's back in, everything's connected and ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up. Got the battery plugged back in. So everything looks good, so here we go. So far it sounds pretty responsive and good. Oh yeah, sounds nice. Okay, now we're gonna go take it for a spin and see if it's any quicker than before. All right, this thing's already accelerating very easy with barely pressing the gas. Already a huge improvement. Um, last time I did this little test there wasn't that strong of a headwind and now we have quite a strong headwind so I'm gonna go ahead and put this right here and we're gonna go ahead and try it so It definitely feels a lot more responsive than it did. Um, that headwind even going straight towards us, it's its crazy because it's still pulling really well. Um, the miles per gallon are doing pretty good, about 29, 28 highway speeds. So uh, yeah, this should work pretty well. I think my wife's going to be a little shocked when she pushes the gas because uh, this thing accelerates very easily now. So I am very happy with just this one mod. Uh, obviously we can do some more mods and we will go back to the house and I will talk about those so I really hope you guys are enjoying this video um, but yeah we'll talk more when we get back to my house all right well that definitely made a huge difference swapping the Honda Odyssey intake manifold on um, and it's pretty cheap to do if you have a local salvage yard just uh, go in there find an 06 07 or 08 Honda Odyssey take that intake manifold and upper piece off. You don't have to take the Odyssey's throttle, but if you want to, go for it. Um, use yours, you don't have to recalibrate it or anything, you just slap yours on, new gasket, and you're good to go. Uh, it's pretty simple, little mod. Now there are other mods we can do to this to make it even quicker. For example, a little bit larger diameter intake pipe that runs all the way down to behind the bumper. Um, that'll get true cold air, it'll be a true cold air intake. This is just a short ram. It works good for the flow because the factory one is a little restrictive, but it is sucking some heat in the engine bay, so we could get a little more power if that ran all the way down. They also make pre-cat deletes um, for the front cats, so the catalytic converters can be hollowed out. The middle cat is still on here. What we could do is get high flow cats put on up front and a larger diameter middle cat if you want to keep it within legal limits and then a uh, two and a quarter inch exhaust all the way out the back, custom made. That'll give you a decent bump in power. Um, there's other things we can do like plenum uh, spacer uh, thermal gaskets, sorry, not spacer, but the thermal gaskets. You can get a couple of the thermal gaskets. That'll help reduce some of the heat soak into the intake manifold, which the intake manifold is not very hot. That's the great thing about these ones. They don't heat soak as easy since they're supposed to be magnesium or something like that. Um, but, uh, yeah this one's been extensively gone through we went through got new o-rings on all the injectors and the intake manifold gasket from the um, cylinder head to the intake manifold those have been replaced brand new coolant temp sensor uh, egr valve has been replaced and a bunch of other odds and ends have been replaced on this thing and um, yeah it's it's becoming a good vehicle when we got this thing almost a year ago, it was not so good. Uh, at the one year update, I will do a video and go over and show you every little thing we've done to this uh, and just make a nice little video. But yeah, you can definitely get power out of these if you're wanting that. 
Um, but this thing as it is, it's pretty good. It is, it seats all six of us and uh, I can't really complain. The transmission was shifting bad, but it just happened to be those uh, fourth and third pressure switch. And we're probably gonna replace the shift solenoids just to get it all done. But uh, 244,000 miles and it's running strong still. So I am super happy with it. My wife's gonna be really happy with it once I get the paint job done. God willing, this week it gets done. Um, I'm gonna claim it in Jesus' name right now. But uh, yeah, we're gonna get this thing looking real nice. Um, eventually, we're gonna see if we can't get a lowering kit made for this particular one. I know the 06 and up, or the 07 or something like that, they make the H&R lowering kit for the Honda Odyssey. They bolt right on here. But on this particular one, they do not bolt on. I tried it. I learned that lesson. It cost me $100 in shipping to learn that. Um, so, I sent the stuff back, by the way. But uh, yeah, it's definitely doing awesome. And we have more stuff to come for sure. I'm going to get some exhaust stuff done. Nothing too loud uh, since the wife drives it and she don't want it too loud. But we do want some rumble to it. So, we're going to figure all that out in upcoming videos. So definitely stay tuned. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and share the video around and subscribe if you're new here. If you're wondering why it's wet, I went through and pressure washed it um, so that I could make sure that the oil leak has stopped. So we will see if that oil leak is fixed. I'm pretty sure it was that rear valve cover gasket. But uh, yeah, it's basically it for this video. There will definitely be more coming, so stay tuned to this channel and the other one. Link is in the description. Uh, definitely check those links out and uh, subscribe if you haven't. But, but that's basically it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. And as I like to say, God bless, stay safe, stay awesome.